Pour them around the table. We are almost there. No, we're not. Four. Okay, we need two more. Um, okay. Right, we'll take it. Yep, we've got it. Almost there in the seats. Welcome, Richard, Roger, and Carl. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I'll just make some brief introductory comments and then pass over to Roger. Um, you could say that these times are interesting times for Panuku uh, as, a, as an overall summary. Good progress is being made with Manukau, Hobsonville, and a number of other developments, including Panmuir, uh, where we're working with the Tamaki Regeneration Company. Opportunities are, uh, uh, are appearing in the uh, Manukau transform location, which uh, can be expanded on. Clearly the LTP will affect Panuku and its outcomes that it can achieve next year. Inevitably, the America's Cup has absorbed for the last four or five months a number of Panuku resources. Overall, Panuku is in good heart and looking forward to the next 12 months. So with that, I'll pass over to Roger. Richard. Roger. Good afternoon. Um, I'd just like to uh, give you, uh, in three categories, highlights of the last uh, six months as at end of uh, December, and then some financial updates, and then give you a bit of an overview of the challenges and some of the opportunities that we're involving with moving forward. The first residents moved into Wynyard Quarter, in December, the Wynyard Central Pavilions were in partnership with Willis Bond, and this marks a major milestone on the waterfront. The pavilions offer a mix of 113 residences, 25 freestanding pavilions, eight townhouses, 80 apartments, some associated retail, and that's on the ground floor. First homes were also completed and handed over in Hobsonville Point, first phase of 102 homes on the airfield site. Property on Glide Path Road is the first completed home developed in the precinct by A.B. Jennings and designed and built by G.J. Gardner. I know a number of parties had the opportunity to go and have a look around that uh, a few months ago. The kitchen project, this is one of the activation projects that we've been promoting through Henderson and emerging food entrepreneurs in West Auckland can now apply for the kitchen project. This has been run in conjunction with ATEED. It's a local initiative that offers the opportunity to have affordable kitchen space, literally in a porter cabin on our land. And it offers a mentoring program. Through the kitchen project, the opportunity exists to make spaces and to regenerate and reflect the people that make up the local communities. The program will be piloted in Henderson and based out of our own dedicated space on <coughs> Henderson Valley Road and the intake for the first students begins in March later on this month. Moving on to Avondale, this was given the green light with the approval of the overarching high level project plan for the regeneration by Auckland Council's planning committee in November. Panuka worked closely with the local boards and the community to implement a retail strategy to attract new business, to increase diversity of products and services. It's a great location with a train station close by, upgraded bus networks and new cycleways. And we're working closely with a variety of developers to build quality residential neighborhoods you couldn't take a that offer a mix of housing typologies, including terraced homes and apartments. And a number of significant developments are currently in place. On the, face. the America's Cup, as Richard has already alluded to, on behalf of the project sponsor, Auckland Council, we've worked incredibly hard behind the scenes to really promote this potentially exciting opportunity. The team worked throughout the majority of December over the holiday break in order to submit their planning application, approved by the governing body. In the meantime, we continue to facilitate <coughs> a wide variety of technical design and financial support to enable key decision makers to make a decision and progress to the next stage. We've adhered to all the required milestones to date, 
and we will continue to work and break all records to make this project a success. Auckland into the future. Wouldn't mind one of those. <laughs> It'll be available at the end sure, of March. Yeah. Um, the solar powered <coughs> info bike has been seen by many and sharing materials on the city centre and the waterfront. Right. It's a jointly funded project by Auckland Council, Ateed and Panuku. The initial pilot has been out and about across all the events from the anniversary weekend and continues to the end of March. Moving on, Queen's Wharf Dolphin Programme has been approved by the governing body. Panuku is responsible for securing the approval in terms of resource consent, and then that gets handed over to our fellow CCO, Auckland Transport, for the delivery as part of the wider downtown programme. To give you a quick run through of the financial updates, the highlights are we're ahead of our budget. We're likely to spend our capex, and I'll, I'll come back to that because there are some key issues why. Overall, a good surplus position. However, the revenue is down by 0.6 million to date, linked to reduced staff cost recharges for acquisition and disposal costs and delays in capital programs. The Auckland Council funding is also 6.2 million behind budget due to the associated delays of the capital projects not being affected immediately. There's a fair weather value increase in investment property, which amounts to 5.2 million as at December half year. On the managed portfolio, the portfolio is performing strongly with income of 3 million higher than budget. This is due to the back rent from Half Moon Bay Marina, which accounts for 1.3 million. New properties have been added to the portfolio, accounting for 0.7 million, and better expenditure recoveries amounting to 0.5 million from wash ups. On the capital expenditure, is eight. Get the right slide for you. Apologies. On the capital expenditure is 8.8 .8 million behind budget for Panuku assets. The main projects are one, the Sky Path Landing Works, which is a million behind phase budget. And this has been due to delays after the primary contractor pulled out. And obviously our program sits behind the Auckland Transport Program, so hence the delay. The second item is the Wynyard Central Park, which is a million behind budget. Uh, and again, we're running in parallel with the Auckland Transport Programme. The third item is public space renewals, which are a million behind budget to date. Fourth item is contaminated costs. We've allocated 1.4 million of costs, and so far we've paid out a million as at the end of March. Fifth item is the Vos Shed, uh, when we're 0.3 million behind. And again, that project is scheduled to kick off later on this year, so that money will yeah, be recovered back. And some good news is that the Madden and Pakenham Street upgrade, which is a multi-year infrastructure program, has reached practical completion with savings of 2.6 million. So therefore, off the 8.8, .8, uh, that is a benefit. The forecast underspend increases in total to approximately 20 million as some of our larger projects, which are still in the pre-consenting phase, are expected to be delayed or delivered by others, i.e. other members of the council family. For example, we refer to the Dolphin program. Queen's Wharf Dolphin, there's a $2.6 million variance on expenditure this year. And the reason for that is obviously, we haven't had the opportunity yet to start that project. It's running behind with the resource consent and it's part of the AT downtown program, so that budget will actually shift. The West Haven Promenade Stage 2 accounts for <coughs> 3.8 million of expected savings in the year. And the West Haven Marina Village, which we anticipated spending 4 million, hasn't commenced yet. And this is because we had a commitment to achieve 50% pre-lets before we expended further capital costs on that. 
we are currently running at just shy of 50 percent at the moment. So we're confident that will pick up in the next quarter. And number four, the West Haven Palmoring program is 1.7 million cost deferred into 2018. And this was due primarily to the extended consultation that we did with Manafenua. Portfolio capital spend is 10 million behind at the half year and forecasted to reach 21 million by the end of the financial year. On the development project side, year-to-date spend, there are some timing differences to phase budgets for Hobsonville, amounting to 2.1 million, proper territory, 0.9 million, and 0.6 million relating to our Transform Manico program. And these are expected all to be corrected by the end of the financial year. Tamaki transformation is 0.8 billion underspent, and this is forecasted to increase to 2.5 million as one of their major programs relating to the reserve has been deferred now until next financial year. The car park redevelopment at Takapuna on the gasometer site had an expenditure forecast of 4.23 million and a further 3.7 million costs which have been deferred again to 1819. I don't think you need me to go into the rationale behind that, uh, but we've got a great outcome and obviously a great project moving forward. The Strategic Development Fund has a budget of 36.8 million and spend to date this year is 14.2, which is 3.2 million under budget. But there are a number of properties that are targeted for purchase before the end of this financial year including 22 Elm Street, circa 4 million, and Northcote purchases, circa 7.5. Just briefly uh, on some of the challenges we're facing. Obviously, Richard alluded to the issue of resources. It continues to be a challenge for us as we move forward. Um, a lot of our resources um, we've worked up very, very carefully. We've got some really professional people. But it's fair to say we are being targeted by our competitors to take those resources. Looking forward, we're working with the Mayor's Office and Auckland Council CFO to secure the reinvestment from sale proceeds for our unlock programmes over an agreed base target, moving forward for the period 2018-2028. <coughs> this funding will enable a credible amount of work to be undertaken across our unlock locations these include Northcote, Henderson, Old Papa Territory, Takapuna, Panmure, and the city centre. We're also investing, try again, we're also investigating other funding options to achieve urban renewal, infrastructure, and the transportation areas. And we're working closely with Ewe and the private sector who have expressed serious interest in the number of our development programmes. The other area we're looking into is targeted rates. This would be a practical mechanism to fund urban renewal, infrastructure and transportation. We're working through a pilot scheme for Northcote, but this will require supportive legislation and therefore will take time before the scheme could potentially be implemented. Just to give you a bit of a highlight, uh, and then I'll, I'll draw this to a close. Uh, Manukau, four key projects underway. We've got the residential development in Davies Street, which has come to the market. We've got the sale of the commercial car park site, which is great news. We've got a potential redevelopment opportunity with MIT. And we've got the Barracliff Affordable Housing Scheme. Roger. Yes. Uh, sorry, um, we might just get you to wrap up now because, number one, you're going to get quite a bit of examination through the LTP coming yes. up. I'm risking losing a quorum, and it's not your fault, no. it's, um, but I've got the Mayor, Councillor Newman's just gone, I've got the Mayor going, Councillor Watson and Walker, and then we're and, down to... And we won't have to I have to leave. Oh, no then, problems. <coughs> then we will have lost our quorum. We might have to finish on. It's a very good financial summary, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, no I'm just going to ask you to, to wrap up, and then there'll be questions, um, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. 
Is there just one comment? It's always a pleasure to hear you say Avon Dale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think of the bard of Avon, and that makes it sound Avondale a much classier place. So Leave him alone. Yeah. Leave him alone. <laughs> that's, that's what Jeffrey, Jeffrey Palmer used to call it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions of, of um, the team. Probably Councillor Cooper. Um, just a couple, um, quickly. I, I just wondered how does the solar car reflect your SOI? But anyway. Um, <laughs> Sustainability, low carbon. Cheap travel. I didn't ask you. I um, know you did. Okay. Now the other one was um, a, the AT, the gasometer site um, for yes. building the car park. I thought that was AT building that, and it'd be <coughs> their budget, or is it your land and they're building it on on your land? Or uh, it's just confusing because <coughs> we've been, keep hearing AT are going to build the car park. No, the gasometer site is our site, and yes, we will be there. building the car park and AT will be acting as the operator for it, and the proceeds of sale that we achieve from that will be funneled back into the Anzac Street car park. Off. Sorry, sales of tickets or selling the uh, selling car the park site. to AT? No, the car park else. will be in a management agreement with AT, yes. so we will sell the car park and AT will operate it. And the proceeds that we get No, 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 I'm talking rights. about the gasometer. Yes, I'm talking about gasometer. Oh, Gasometer's got two parts. It's got the replacement car park that we have yes. to build. Yes. And then it's got the development opportunity yes, got where that we realise the capital value. I got it. Okay. it just, okay. So you're talking about where you're going to sell the bit that isn't a car park. Absolutely. Got it. Got it. Yes. Okay. That's all right. And yeah, and I'll just have a talk to you about a site I suggested to somebody about two years ago that you could sell and nothing's happened yet. But anyway, I'll talk to you later. Fantastic. Very quick. Yep. Just a dash one. Roger, um, the dolphin, <coughs> could you just <coughs> read how you said it was delayed? Uh, did you hear that right? Or? Well, the dolphin programme now is on, is on target now with the new programme. It's part of the downtown works. Yes. Uh, so effectively, our responsibility is to secure the resource consent, and that effectively from the resource consent, it gets passes <coughs> over to AT as part of the downtown delivery programme. Thank you. Oh, well, this is the advantage of being at the end, and we're in a rush. So, <laughs> happy to move, Mr. Chair. I, I have Councillor Collins. No? No. So, Roger, just the, one last question. In that final statement before you were uh, wrapping up, you said you yeah. were in discussions with, and you mentioned it somewhere in Manuko. I just wanted to. I was referring to the Barrowcliff development. Yeah. Uh, where we're That's in negotiations. Cool. Oh, sorry. There was, and there were three others that you talked yeah, about. Yeah, there were three of the sites. The other sites were the residential site. There was a commercial site. <coughs> there was a site potentially with MIT. Ah, right. So they're Thanks. all at early stages. And then we've got the Barrowcliff land site where we've literally just moved on to site with the Housing Foundation and Tiakatai. Can I just clarify if the MIT one, without getting too much detail, is uh, near a shopping centre? <laughs> Leading question. Possibly that could be offline. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, there's no resolution because we're wrapping up at the end of the resolution, but thank you, uh, thank you, Richard, thank you, Roger, thank you, Carl. <coughs> thank you. Good financial summary. Right, we have John and uh, Hinarangi, please. Come, please come forward. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and everyone else. Uh, Hannah Rangi has been replaced by my chair, Keith Taylor, who was ah, okay. uh, in Auckland for the day. Um, so I might just make a few introductory comments, and then John will give you all the detail. Um, ASIL is a very small organisation that looks after two very big uh, commercial investments uh, for the Council, um, the Ports of Auckland and um, the shares in Auckland Airport. We've simplified further during the current financial year by transferring the asset to Auckland Film Studio, which was by comparison a very small um, operation to the council, and uh, that's now managed uh, between uh, Panuku, who look after the land, and AT, who look after the business. Um, in terms of the financial performance, it's um, in line with our expectations, and we fully expect to be paying the um, budgeted dividend to the council um, this financial year. And with that, I'll hand over to John for anything he wants to fill in. Uh, well, as Keith says, we're a very, very simple organisation. We take money in from other people and give it back to you with a small 
uh, overhead associated with doing that. Uh, we are on track uh, for, for meeting or exceeding our budget this year, um, mostly due to the performance of the companies that we, uh, that we work with. Um, I don't think there's a need to state anything else other than what's in our report, but very happy to take questions um, uh, from councillors on, on our performance over the last half year. Thank you, John. Councillor Cashman. Just looking forward, John, um, with the, both the airport and the port with very large capital expenditures going forward, how do you feel about your predictions about ongoing uh, <coughs> dividends from you back to this council? I'll put it in two halves. So firstly, with the airport, the airport's just recently sold its uh, shareholding in Cairns and Mackay airports, and it did very well, I think. Yeah, they they paid 80, 80 million for them, and they sold them for 300. So they, they tripled whatever they, their initial expenditure was. I think that will take the pressure off any capital raising uh, going forward. Uh, we would probably like to come and talk to Council about a scheme which would help the airport through its dividend reinvestment plan, but we'll look for another opportunity to raise that with Council. Uh, as far as the ports go, uh, yes, the ports is undertaking a large capex um, plan. A lot of that capex is not necessarily at the wharf. Some of it is with cranes and the automation of the terminal. But quite a lot is down in Hamilton where it's looking to build facilities for customers to, uh, to gain the export volumes that they're looking to achieve. Thank you both. Um, just in terms of the Ports of Auckland 30-year uh, master plan, mm -hmm. um, is, has the board and management at ACIL considered how it would it inform itself to provide feedback on that master plan, that draft master plan? Uh, thank you, Councillor Darby. We have seen the draft master plan and we're aware of the major components of it. We're looking, I guess, to uh, the business community and other stakeholders to provide the, the feedback to the, to the ports on that. We see that those stakeholders and their views are probably more important. Uh, we think our role is ensuring the port listens to stakeholders and takes a balanced view from other people's um, comments or feedback on their on their plans. So you're not expecting the parent. I thought we, as the parent of the co of the company owning the port company, would take an interest in that. I mean, I understand that our planning team is working on yep. something. Have they not talked to you about your view on that draft? Because I would I would view it as critically important that parent provides some feedback. Uh, certainly very happy to talk to Jim Quinn and his team uh, as they go through as they go through looking at that uh, that long term plan. Mm -hmm. Wow. I certainly would have thought as a hundred percent um, owner we would be a stakeholder. Well you are and, and we have as one of our um, uh, key objectives making sure that the port operates um, in a way that's consistent with um, the shareholders' um, um, long-term plans and um, requirements. So we do do that um, at um, this stage in terms of that 30-year uh, plan. It's sort of something in discussion. So can I just pick up on that? Well, this is a pretty large body of work. This is a major asset on the waterfront, and I'm not hearing that there's communication between our own core team and the, the CCO who we've charged with linking through to the port company. Mm. I mean, I would, have, I, would, I would have thought this would be before that board, and I know our team is starting to work on it, but Mr Chair, I think this is critical work, and if it's not underway, there's a gap. <coughs> it's not the role of the, of, uh, the CFO, acting CFO, oh, I, to I answer this that. question, yep. so um, I think we'll take that one offline as well with the Chief Executive. Um, but he's right, well, you're right. But Matthew yeah. might comment briefly, but he's, he's, I'm not expecting Matthew to comment too much. No, look through the chair and all I was going to say, and I think John's offered, and, and uh, I suggest that's a pretty good idea for the link with Jim Quinn and team to happen um, shortly. Yeah. And I, I would point out that there's a lot, of, a lot of discussion that does take place between the port and Jim Quinn's team yeah. over that, over that, over that yeah. plan. And I guess the issue for us is being very clear about where we add value to that, to that process and, uh, and ensuring that we do add value and don't <coughs> add, add time or other uh, 
other negative consequences. Have you had any um, feedback that we haven't had from this uh, a stakeholder being the government as to when, when and how they're going to structure the uh, Upper North Island ports study? Uh, no, I, I have asked that question. I've uh, talked directly with uh, the Minister for Regional Development on that. I think it's fair to say that there's still some conflicting views and advice going to central government about how best to, to undertake that. I would expect that um, we are probably really not seen as a key stakeholder, us being a sort of key stakeholder in that, and I would expect that our other council officials are probably going to have greater visibility and clarity over that process. Asking supplementary to, yeah. to other work going on. Any further questions? As is often, quite brief, and uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, John. Right, well, we do have a resolution, and you can be here to be here at that. We do thank all the... Um, I'll move the resolution. Seconded. Where is it? Seconded by Councillor Fletcher. And the resolution is in your books, because it's not on the screen. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. And against? Isn't it? And against. So we now go on to... Uh,